um, thank you very much. Um, as uh, Louise uh, mentioned, I'm a partner with Gianni Rigoni, Grippo Campelli and Partners. I deal uh, uh, with corporate uh, transaction and I uh, regularly advise uh, corporations uh, on corporate governance, uh, anti-corruption, anti-bribery uh, obligations. Um, we are all curious as part of the Italian panel uh, uh, to listen to the experience, uh, fascinating experience uh, of a um, uh, great entrepreneur like uh, uh, Bruno Cucinelli. So I will spend only a few minutes uh, to uh, indicate uh, which, are, uh, uh, which is the legal scenario uh, and which are the pieces of legislation, uh, the most relevant pieces of legislation against corruption and bribery that uh, form uh, the Italian legal environment uh, uh, to fight uh, uh, corruption uh, uh, and bribery. Uh, I would say that uh, uh, the main principle that should drive uh, not only the legislator, but whoever uh, uh, um, uh, deals with this environment uh, is the principle of uh, what we call of the stick and the carrot, the bastone and the la carota. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, there must be uh, a balance uh, uh, between uh, the punitive uh, and sanctions systems uh, and the incentive incentives uh, that the legislator uh, must give to the entrepreneurs and to the individuals and to the officers of the corporations uh, in order not to fall uh, into the corruption and into uh, the bribery. Uh, very rapidly, I will go through uh, the main pieces of legislation that recently have uh, allowed to create uh, a legal environment uh, which, at least for the stick side, uh, I would personally define as, uh, uh, if not mature, but certainly advanced, uh, while perhaps much uh, there is uh, still to do from uh, the carrot side, from the incentive side. Uh, a piece of legislation uh, which uh, uh, everybody is aware of uh, is the Legislative De Decree 231, which has introduced the administrative liability of legal entities deriving from criminal offenses. Uh, this is a piece of legislation I was discussing with uh, uh, Luis uh, uh, before the panel uh, started, which is uh, uh, not uh, uh, provided uh, uh, yet in a number of uh, important jurisdictions, uh, but certainly in Italy, um, after a week beginning, and now he's doing his job, uh, the number of crimes uh, that are listed and that are taken into consideration are now um, uh, efficient. Uh, the only crimes, as you may know, the only relevant crimes that, that you may, uh, uh, may know are not included and are not sanctioned by this decree are the tax uh, crimes. But otherwise, all corporate crimes, uh, and not only corporate crimes, environmental crimes, for example, are included, and therefore, Italian corporations are certainly incentived in order to avoid heavy sanctions uh, to uh, prove and to do all what they can uh, uh, in order to prevent their officers to commit, uh, uh, to commit crimes. Uh, in 2000, uh, thank you. In 2012, the Severino laws in, uh, modified the Italian civil code and introduced the offense of corruption among uh, private parties. Uh, and this is also a piece of legislation uh, which proved to be particularly uh, effective. And then two very recent uh, pieces of legislation. In 2014, the establishment of the Autorità Nazionale Anticorruzione. And very recently, a few months ago, in May 2015, the introduction of heavier sanctions for corruption, extortion, uh, extortion and bribery, and particularly the introduction of the remedy of money compensation uh, upon the individual who commits uh, the corruption or bribery uh, crime. This is very important. Uh, uh, particularly for an adverb that is used uh, in this, uh, um, in this uh, uh, article, in this law, which is sempre, always. Uh, the article established that always 
the individual who has committed the crime uh, must compensate, must give back uh, the equivalent of the money, of the damage that he has created, without prejudice of the additional damages. Uh, and this, as part of the uh, stick side of the game, is particularly important because uh, we know that, unfortunately, people uh, may be more impressed by pecuniary sanctions that are relevant than from other uh, uh, types of, of sanctions. Let me uh, uh, stress uh, a very important uh, uh, judgment which was issued a few months ago uh, by the Court of Appeal of Milan. Uh, it is a judgment uh, that is particularly debated uh, uh, these days uh, um, uh, because it uh, introduces the concept of uh, um, the obligation to pay a sanction even if proof of damage is not given. Um, very rapidly, uh, an individual was sanctioned by Bank of Italy and Consob for uh, uh, a certain uh, uh, misbehavior. The individual succeeded to prove that his misbehavior did not cause any damage to anyone, notwithstanding that, both the authorities and the decision of the authorities was upheld by the Court of Appeal uh, believed and maintained that a sanction was still to be paid because the sanction was not punishing only the creation of a damages, but the mere acting of a misbehavior. This is a very critical uh, concept uh, uh, that if uh, uh, upheld uh, uh, in future uh, um, judgments uh, and also in other areas uh, of law could be really, uh, could be really uh, very uh, important. I don't want to uh, take too much time, so I will uh, leave the word to uh, Bruno Cucinelli and then if you have questions uh, in the last part of the panel, I will be happy to, to answer. Thank you very much.